I'm going to try to make a point to fill in some dead air. I'd like to eventually try to get some streaming audio coming out of my network. Uh, but I think the first thing is going to be just having someone here who will listen and talk, who will uh, receive feedback, which by the way, if you are on a computer listening to this, not a cell phone, but a computer, uh, you can probably install Ricochet. Ricochet is an instant messaging program that is kind of like ICQ or MSN or Facebook chat. Um, it doesn't support Jabber slash XMPP, but it is over top of the Tor network. And so the idea is that, one, as long as the Tor network works, it will be possible to use Ricochet. Two, as long as the Tor network provides privacy from endpoint to endpoint, so for people to communicate across the Tor network without eavesdroppers being able to listen to them, Ricochet will allow you to communicate privately with whomever else uses Ricochet. So, if you want to add me on Ricochet, if you've gone through the trouble of downloading and installing it, you can. Uh, ricochet colon M for Mountain, S for Sierra, Z for Zebra, I for Igloo, S for Sierra, N for Neptune, A for Alpha, F for Foxtrot, Seven, V for Victor, Q for oh, Quim, Q for Quim, P for Penguin, H for Hello, R for Romeo, D for Delta. If you add me, make sure I'm online, but I, I am online now, so if you're listening to this, uh, go ahead, install Ricochet, see if you can add me. And if you have any questions during this broadcast, you uh, feel, should feel free to send me them over Ricochet, and I will try to answer them as I get them. So, what is this? What are you listening to right now? Well, to give a little bit of background on that, we've got to talk a little bit about Rant Radio. So, r what was Rant Radio? Rant Radio was a project by uh, Sumerian out of, uh, I think it's Langley in British Columbia, uh, somewhere over in the Vancouver area, for sure. Um, that was a internet radio station that was originally intended as a pirate station, i.e. completely underground, playing whatever they felt like, but eventually became uh, a little bit more above board with time, and getting permission from artists to play their music, etc. Um, it was originally uh, whatever the people like J James or Sim uh, felt like listening to, which was a lot of electronica and industrial. Uh, but as they became more popular, they split into three separate stations. Rant Radio Industrial, Rant Radio Talk, and Rant Radio Punk. And so, instead of tuning in and never knowing what you're going to get, uh, you were likely to, if you tune into the talk station, you would most of the time get people talking most of the time. Sometimes they, they would play music as part of their shows. If you turn tuned into the punk station, you'd get a punk music. If you turned into the industrial station, you had industrial music. I was never a big fan of this split. I liked the old rant radio, where you turned in and it was a lot of uh, excitement and chaos, and you never really knew what you were going to hear. And, but they did the hard work of making a radio station, so I didn't really complain. Or at least I don't remember complaining all that much. Because I knew that at the end of the day, uh, they were putting in work, they were making the station, they were making the station work, they paid for the bandwidth, they paid for the computers, they worked hard and made something that we could all enjoy out here on the internet. And in fact, outside of the internet. Because it's just data. The information that they were sending over the internet was just ones and zeros. And those ones and zeros could be recorded. And in fact, I did record a lot of it. I have months of recorded audio from Rand Radio that you can, if you have a copy of, play back and experience what it was like to listen to that station 
for various periods of time. And so if you wanted to hear what was going on in the news, for example, and, and sure, they played a lot of rebroadcasts. Um, the Sean Kennedy Newsreel show, for example, uh, was played, uh, was one of the shows that they had access to, and that, which they did play over and over again. But you did get live news, live recordings as well. This is what uh, kept a whole community of people together for a long time. And sure, we grew up, we, we grew old, we drifted apart. But at the same time, it was like there was always somewhere you could go back to. No matter where you were in the world, no matter what you were doing, no matter how good or bad your life was going, you could turn on the radio and listen to, again, the news from the perspective of this group, from the perspective of the internet, from the perspective of people who spent a lot of their waking life on the internet. It wasn't a um, pre-internet news source. It wasn't a pre-internet source of music. This was something that was a digital native media. It was a, a place that felt more like it addressed the, the kinds of things you would want to listen to, the kinds of information, the kinds of perspectives that you as a digital native uh, would be interested in far more than any of the TV news, any of the uh, even radio, um, terrestrial radio broadcasts uh, for the most part. At least I thought so. And so this year, after 20 years of operation, Rant Radio finally shut down. Which was kind of sad, in a way. Uh, because it seemed like it had been running itself just fine. Although apparently the, one of the streams was down when Sumerian went to turn the switch. Or at least to check to see, to make an announcement that it was going down. So there were problems, and there were always little glitches and problems. That's not a big deal. Uh, but the, the thing is that when this, this station went down, there, there was some, there, there's a gap left in some of our lives because there were, really was a place in our life for a radio station. A, an audio, a live audio source that would keep us, the, the people who would listen to it, with something to hear, something to think about, something to encourage us to be better people, perhaps. Something to give advice, something to give technical support to, uh, a central point of coordination. And now that place is gone. But again, what was Rant Radio? One of the things that inspired Rant Radio to even exist was Jello Biafra. Jello Biafra, one of the early punks uh, out of the punk scene and the do-it-yourself scene, uh, had a really strong ethic of do-it-yourself. If the media in your life is failing you, then become the media. Don't hate the media, become the media. Out here in 2019, there is a problem with the media. Facebook is bigger than any newspaper. Google is bigger than any newspaper. Probably both individually are bigger than any newspaper that has ever existed in terms of the number of readers, in terms of the number of people you can reach and who are reached every day in terms of the number of words read, the number of concepts gotten across, all of it. These two companies are big media in the sense that of that word that in the way it was used in the 80s when people were really thinking a lot about what media was and what it could be. And they are not ideal. Google has uh, 
cut. I think it was I was reading on the Gateway Pundit's website something like two billion page views from conservatives. Um, Facebook has cut hundreds of pages, and e even just the Liberty Memes pages uh, is going through and silencing group after group after group. There's the term "zucked" uh, is been coined to describe how people can get put in quote-unquote Facebook jail and have their account unable to say things. And sure, some of the people who get silenced uh, say things that are reprehensible or that are could even damage uh, public health. Like, for example, people who uh, are against vaccines, uh, or at least against governments uh, being in charge of what vaccines you take. Uh, there, there's entire debates we can have on this, but the ability of Facebook and Google to choose what news you read and what news you do not read, uh, it's not just, you know, some, uh, theoretical, maybe one day they will abuse this. They've already started to abuse this. And so the question isn't whether or not we should make media that concentrated and that powerful. We know from the experience of the 80s and 90s that when you have everyone getting their information from a single source, bad things happen. We know censorship happens and doesn't just affect the anti-vaxxers and so on, because the people who get censored uh, will turn to try to turn to other media and then those media start getting censored and th we've already started to see that happening with for example patreon uh, is starting to go down the list of uh, people who are not conservatives even um, and just revoking their access to basically the media being able to publish and being able to broadcast and so when this starts to happen the alternative viewpoints are suddenly no longer available to a lot of people. And if you don't actively try to access and to, to, to have within your life these sources of alternate viewpoints, like a muscle, you're, you're going to atrophy. You're, you're going to lose the ability to have access to those viewpoints when they count. And sure, most of the time, the dominant status quo viewpoint is fine for your day-to-day -day life. You won't ruffle any feathers. If you know about what everyone around you knows about, it's something that you can genuinely talk about and, and uh, have uh, cordial social relations. If there's no disagreement, uh, if there's no uh, personal bickering, then maybe that's a pleasant way to live. But at the same time, you are guaranteeing that you're not seeing the whole picture. You're not seeing the whole truth. You're not, you're being, the, the chances that, that you as a group, and so as a member of that group, are being misled becomes very high the more concentrated the media in your life becomes. One of the ways to get around this is to, for independent media to exist. Maybe everyone didn't have to listen to Rant Radio. Maybe the ideas that um, were presented on Rant Radio, uh, of which there were many contradicting ideas, as you'd imagine in an independent station with a lot of voices included, uh, maybe it wasn't for everyone. I like to think that it kind of was, but perhaps in the, in the long run of the 20 year history of it, maybe there were just the, a lot of people who were perfectly happy and content with commercial radio, and they, that rent radio would never really appeal to them. But at the same time, there was a space in the world for those voices. And sometimes they were right in a way that no other voice was right. Rant Radio, uh, j just like to bring in an example, uh, the the idea of what was wrong with Facebook. 
when the commercial media had no problem at all promoting Facebook as something that everyone should join, there were some skeptical voices on Rant Radio. Maybe had we listened to those voices, we'd be in a different place now. Hard to say. But, in any case, there was a place in the world for these critical voices, for imaginative and creative voices, for people who were willing to experiment with the media to see what it could become. And there is still a place in the world for that. There is still a place in the world for people to record their thoughts into a microphone for others to listen. Which brings me to the next point, which is that our brains are set up to process information in different ways than just text. Our brains are set up to process information in different ways than just a visual field. If we are not listening to music or to someone talking, we are not using the parts of our brain that are capable of doing this. There was a long period of time in my life, at least, where I was perfectly comfortable listening to the radio while doing some other kind of work. It wasn't distracting. It was something in the background, something that I could maybe zo zone out into from time to time. But I don't think that that was an unhealthy thing. And so when we have this, this media, this ability to listen, to get inspiration, to have our brain synced with others and synced with this I these ideas uh, through our, our ears, through our audio cortex, uh, I think that this is something that we should be taking advantage of. And who is this we, by the way? Uh, well, if you are listening, then I'm including you in that. Maybe no one else will listen to this. Maybe this is going to get stuck in my hard drive, and it's just going to be a, a rant or some record or a journal or something like that. And if that's the case, then fine. But I'd like to broadcast live. I'd like for there to be somewhere broadcasting live that isn't Facebook and Google or, or YouTube or Twitch. Something that doesn't require proprietary software would be nice. Icecast worked. Rat Radio was able to make it work. So, but I'm not going to get into the, the whole free software thing today. I'll, I'll leave that for another day. What I want to get into is why we want to listen to something like Rant Radio. Another reason why you'd want to listen to something like Rant Radio, or at least for it to exist, is just in the concept, the name, Rant Radio. Life can be frustrating. There can be things in our life that don't go well. And there's not much we can do about them at the time. In the long haul, we can sometimes do things about the things that go wrong in our lives. We can uh, have, you know, work. We, we can coordinate with other people. We can ask for help. We can do all kinds of things to solve our problems. But in the short term, it doesn't usually help all that much that in the long term we can solve problems. In the short term, sometimes it just sucks. Sometimes w w there's nothing you can do but even cry uh, or, or just gr sort of grin and bear it, depending how you want to take it, depending how you want to face it. But one of the things you could do is get angry. And getting angry doesn't solve all problems. In fact, some a, a significant amount of problems. It'll just make worse. Especially if you get angry at other people. Because the other people in your life are usually the people who can help you through your problems. And it's unfortunate and ugly sometimes. Because you don't want to help them. You don't want to make their life better. You don't want to work with them. They're you know, the ones who cause your problems, perhaps. Uh, but... Getting angry at them doesn't always help. Well, sometimes it does. Uh, if, if you need to set a boundary in, in some relationship, and this doesn't have to be like a romantic relationship. This can be any kind of social relationship. 
getting angry is a good way of making clear where the boundaries are and setting new boundaries. Because people notice and will remember that, oh hey, you know, if I did this, it pissed so-and-so off, I'm not going to do that again. Or maybe I will do it again, but at least I know the response is going to be them getting pissed off again. So there, there's uses for anger, and there's uses for anger in social uh, relationships, uh, but it can definitely get out of hand. And our, the circuits in our brain uh, that are responsible for anger uh, can definitely um, be turned on and stuck on and turned up and up and up. Uh, there's a book by one Stephen Pinker, The Better Angels of, uh, of Our Nature, that talks about some of these circuits in our brain that anger comes from and where anger, uh, how anger works on a really low level. And so you can, it, it, it's actually quite a read and anyone who's listening to this, uh, I, I wouldn't put it as a must read, uh, but if, if these sorts of things are interesting to you, you'll probably want to go check it out. But the point is, is that it is just a circuit in our brain or two that uh, does this. And so if it gets overused or if, if, if it gets used in an inappropriate situation, it can lead to violence. It can lead to all sorts of bad things happening to you and the people around you. But at the same time, one of the ways we can manage it is controlling when and under what context we turn it on. And if we know that you can get angry now or you can kind of internally get angry and express it later, that can be a way of controlling your anger. And so that brings us to Rant Radio. In my mind, what Rant Radio was, and maybe it never turned out this way, maybe that this is purely a fantasy in my own head, maybe this is a, a way that Rant Radio could have been, but never actually was. But as I understood it, you could record a rant. You could record yourself being angry, complaining and yelling into a microphone about the things that pissed you off. And then you could send that rant, maybe with a little bit of sound editing and a little bit of music in the background to make it palatable, uh, to Rant Radio, and they would play it. Maybe this didn't happen. Maybe the only people who made these rants were Sean Kennedy, the fucking man, to the ranting Griffin, uh, and then the odd smokehouse or whatever else rant. Uh, and it wasn't just because the, the manufacturing process of making them palatable was actually harder than it looked, uh, and that you needed software, you needed the time, you needed the, the, the recording setup, you needed a lot of things to do it. But nowadays, a lot of people do have software. A lot of people do have phones with microphones, or in my case, little heart-shaped webcam microphones that you could record something into. So, the idea would then be you get pissed off at something. Something goes wrong in your life. You have nowhere that you can direct that anger to in a healthy way. So you just sort of stew on it for a while, get out of the situation where expressing anger could do you harm, record into a microphone the situation in such a way that you can get away with saying it to the internet. Put some music on it, make it palatable. Send it to the rest of us to listen to. And then everyone can have yet another piece of your life, yet another piece of someone else being pissed off, so that even if they don't have the words, even if they can't express it themselves, someone else expressed it for them. Someone else put into words what they feel, and that helps them. That helps them deal with it. That helps them, the listener, get through what is bothering them, even if they couldn't do it, even if they couldn't understand how to see the situation in such a way that it made sense. Sometimes things happen and you're just like completely flabbergasted and you're angry and you're afraid and you're alone and you don't know who to turn to or who to talk to and the people in your life just don't understand. 
Well, in those cases, if, if you hear someone else with your problem or a similar problem to yours, and they're pissed, and they're mad as hell, and they're not going to take it anymore, it feels good. It does. And sometimes that's all you need. And then, sometimes, if it isn't just you and that other person who recorded that rant, if it's not just, you know, Susie at the supermarket, if it's not just the, you know, Rose at the, the other supermarket in another city, some, there are some problems where there's a lot of people affected by them. There's a lot of people pissed off. There's a lot of people who can't deal with it in a day-to-day -day sense and just don't know who to turn to, don't know how to fix the problem. There are a lot of people working at supermarkets all over North America and all over the world. There are a lot of, a lot of people in bullshit minimum wage jobs. And these jobs, ha there are problems with them. There are things that happen during these jobs. And it, it's a universal, or, or at least a near universal, experience. A lot of people work in these kinds of jobs. And so the kinds of problems that you would face in these jobs, uh, they're a shared experience across a lot of people. And when you have a problem like that, when you have a situation where there's, you know, thousands or millions of people affected by the same issue and you have an internet that connects all those people and you have a, a, a radio station or, or a stream of audio talking to these people allowing them to communicate their their frustrations with each other then it starts to become thinkable that some of these problems you can resolve on a scale beyond the individual and sure, we have institutions for that already. We have governments, we have unions, we have companies, e even corporations, large corporations, uh, are, at the end of the day, a way of organizing people to solve the problem of coordination, of how do I go from, you know, 20 unemployed people in, you know, or, or 20,000 unemployed people in, you know, 18th century Scotland or 18th century England and uh, do something useful for other people with those people and something useful enough that people will be willing to give you money. Well, the corporation is one of the, the things that came out of that. And there's been a lot of other um, ways of, uh, of dealing with these kinds of problems that have been thought of over the, the hundreds and thousands of years. Uh, but at the same time, problems still persist. We still get frustrated. We still have to work in these bullshit jobs. And so, there is space for something else. There is space for us to work together. There is space for us to talk for us to think about our shared experiences, our shared frustrations, the things that matter to us. I'd like for that space to still exist. I've got a computer. I've got a microphone. It's not a very good microphone. Maybe I'll get a better microphone. I, I can't afford it. Uh, it is something within my means. Uh, but if, if we can make this work, maybe something will come from it. That's what I'd like to think, anyway. So, Rant Radio is a, a space, or was a space, and maybe, maybe this, whatever this is, I haven't got a name or a word for it yet, but, uh, Maybe it'll be a place where that can still happen. A place where ideas that I don't personally agree with might be able to be heard. I did an experiment once. 
It was one of the memes passed around before memes meant just picture. Meme, of course, meant some thing, some idea, some concept that could be copied. Uh, but a meme went around uh, which asked in a uh, conciliatory way for the people in my life to say one thing that I they knew that I would disagree with. And I tried to make, you know, promise them that I wouldn't hold it against them that they did so. In some ways, I maybe I didn't do as good at that uh, as I would have liked. In particular, uh, there was w one person who was pro Sask Party, and the Sask Party has done some pretty terrible things that have impacted m me and my family and the place that I grew up, Saskatchewan, in quite a negative way. But uh, in some ways I wish I would have listened to him more. Because the SAS party does occasionally have uh, valid criticisms of the NDP regime that preceded it. And I think a, a lot of... Or the NDP could have gotten more support if it was willing to listen to those criticisms more. And, uh, well, a third viewpoint, a neutral third party, would have certainly helped more, uh, would have been the, the, the necessary uh, counterforce to their being able to get away with some things. That wasn't always available. And so, anyway, I, I made this post saying, uh, you, you know, post something that I, I will disagree with, just to kind of get them out, to get these ideas that I'm not currently thinking about out, where I might be wrong. Because sure, there's going to be things that I'm wrong about. Uh, there are things that I disagree with, uh, things that I used to believe. So I would have been wrong in, in, in uh, the past. I, I would have been ignorant of some things. For example, uh, starting around 2015-2016, I went out and I read the Quran, uh, the Sunni Hadiths, the Shia Hadiths, the Abadi Hadiths, uh, and not, not just one translation of the Quran, but multiple translations of the Quran, cover to cover. Uh, and I went through and listened to thousands of hours, I'm sure, of lectures from Sunni, mostly Sunni, clerics and imams. And I've exposed myself to an awful lot of Islam at this point in my life, in such a way that I really had not been exposed to as a teenager and as a you know 20-something. And so when I would get into arguments with people about Islam as a 20-something, uh, compared to today, or at least you know a year or two ago when I was in the thick of it, uh, I really did have a different impression of what Islam was and how it worked. And I'm not going to get into Islam now. Maybe I'll get into that later. But the point is, is that you can learn things over time. And as you argue with people, you can... M maybe in, in the argument you won't, to save face, you won't agree that, oh yeah, I was wrong about this. But every time we notice that we're wrong about something, we do grow. And so this experiment that I did, where I encouraged people to point out one thing that I was wrong about, to just get it all in one place, that was a good experiment to try. It didn't work as well as I'd like, in that the social consequences of uh, getting all of that dirty laundry out uh, were bigger than I anticipated. But there is a, a place in our lives to hear that the emperor has no clothes. And so maybe that's one thing that this can be, is a space for us to hear the things we disagree with, to challenge our views of the world, to challenge our uh, whether or not we're right. 
University be, is supposed to be a place where ideas are subjected to challenge, where the prevailing notions are subjected to experiment, to test them. And we can get into whether or not university is succeeding or failing on that. But university is still something that not everyone gets to experience. And one of the things that a station like Rant Radio could, or in fact did do, was expose people to various ideas to have that kind of, may, maybe not dialogue so much, but uh, th th that, that kind of situation where if someone says something and it's wrong, other people will call them on it. And maybe we didn't hear all of the times that other people were called on it. Maybe sometimes Sean Kennedy was wrong about something, and we didn't hear it. But uh, you usually did. He did publish a lot of letters that were critical. It was one of the things that put content on this, the, uh, the stream, right? So there, there is a space for that. And there, there continues to be a space for that. Then an, another thing that Rant Radio was, uh, there, there, there's this idea of in the newspaper world of a newspaper of record. Uh, if you go into, I, I just saw the the Noam Chomsky manufacturing consent movie, uh, and they they show a, a a clip of this room that the New York Times used to have. Maybe they've digitized it by now. But he used to have clippings of newspapers going all the way back to their, you know, the beginning, and where history is, to some extent, what the New York Times recorded, and that means that history is, to an extent, what their advertisers wanted them to present as history, because that is who makes the decisions. It's who controls the media gets to determine what is and is not history. And sure, there are some things in history that get recorded even if the people don't want them recorded, you know, that are not completely flattering, or, or at least pre presented in a way that are not completely flattering. But if you are recording history constantly, you will pick up a lot of bias, and the more sources of history we have, the better the more we are able to see that, oh, hey, this is just something that the New York Times said. There is another perspective. There is another viewpoint on this. And, of course, there, there's seven, bil or seven billion viewpoints. But there are commonalities. There are things that we can agree happened or didn't happen. And then, it, to some extent, there, there's views that we can share as and I mean you as a listener here, uh, we, we as a group of people can share. And our history may not get recorded if we trust only the New York Times or today the equivalent would be Facebook. Suddenly the Facebook community standards wipes certain things from history from ever being recorded. The fact that war crimes happened in Dawa or Dawa al-Islamia, um, that that may be just completely wiped at the rate we're going. YouTube isn't recording it. Facebook isn't recording it. So there is a space. Uh, space in the long run, in the long now, for not a newspaper of record, but something of record. And I listen to Off the Hook a lot. I've listened to all of the Off the Hook shows. Uh, and all of the Hope Audio, and a lot of the things surrounding Emmanuel Goldstein in 2600. Um, and that is one of the things that they do. They are realistically a, a newspaper of record, or a podcast of record, going all the way back to 1989. And Off the Hook is not going to last forever. I, I, I didn't think it would last this long, even. Um, the radio station WBAI that it's on has its own problems, 
it, it, it is a human construction just like anything else and can go away if it's not funded. Um, but the point here is that if you look back in history, you can see their perspective because they recorded it. They bothered to record it. They bothered to have their group be heard, not just when current events were happening, but 20 years down the line and 30 years down the line. So, maybe, the future will listen to these. Maybe, someone will get something out of this. So maybe someone will, will understand something about our time, what we were frustrated with, what we were angry about, how things were and were not working right. Maybe it'll help them understand their own time a little bit better. Maybe it'll help them help themselves. Maybe it will inform them about ways that we thought. Because it, it is really like being in a conversation. Maybe not one where you can talk back, but the kind of conversation where you have to sit and listen to some old person as they relate a story that you could not possibly have been there for. And all you can do is listen. That'll be what the future can get out of this. That sort of sense that, oh hey, there was a world that existed before us. There were people that lived there. Like the Roman Empire. Millions of people lived there. Now what are they? They're dust. We too will be dust one day. And everything that we do will be gone. But if we record some history, some of our thoughts, some of our frustrations. Maybe the future can know about us. Maybe the future will see that their problems, they're not alone. In some sense. Just like we're not alone. If we try to reach out to them, maybe we will. Maybe we'll get them. Anyway, so the past couple of weeks, I've been kind of holed up in my apartment, and there's not a lot of people here that I am in contact with. There's a event called Nerd Night. I went to Nerd Night. They gave a talk. And maybe we'll talk more about Nerd Night later. Uh, but the point is, is that is really, it, it, it's, it's a live once a month or once every two months thing where people get together and they share experiences in this sort of kind of organized way. And it's great, but it's not recorded. And we have to have some other contact in our life, something else. Maybe not radio, but th there's got to be something else. And I, I really haven't had that lately. So th this is going to be, one, in addition to all the other stuff, uh, an attempt for me to reach out to other people a little bit as well. So th there's that too. Uh, so what else was Rant Radio? Rant Radio was also a place where th 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 there's a place you can get to in life where you're not sure why you're kicking around and why you're still living. And where if things are going, s if you're so frustrated and things are going so wrong that you don't, you, you're kind of on the verge of giving up. And this was one of the places that I was, or w one of the frames of mind that I was in when I first found Red Radio, and which I have been in, in, in various parts in, of my life, where I've just been so down and so um, out of energy that I felt like giving up. And sometimes all you have energy to do is to just sit and listen to something. And listening doesn't take all that much energy doesn't take all that much effort. You kind of do it automatically. 
your, your brain will tune into a voice and pay attention to it in the absence of other things to pay attention to. And so it was kind of a hook, something to catch your attention and to kind of drag you along. And for people who have been depressed, that's, that's just it, right? You, you are dragged. You, you don't want to move. You don't want to get out of bed. You, you don't want to do anything. But listening to someone talk can help get you moving. And once you're moving, sometimes it feels good to move. Sometimes it feels good to hear people. Some, sometimes, even if, it, if you can't feel it immediately, it does good things to you and allows you to get to a place where you feel a little bit better. And there's, depression is a big topic, and there, at least in my understanding, it's not a solved problem. The tools we have to help with depression are blunt. Sometimes they do permanent damage to our brains. Uh, some of the drugs are addictive and you form dependencies on them. And so if you stop taking them, you get more depressed. And so that this is a, a kind of a problem that anything that helps, even a little bit, is worth uh, being out there. Because suicide is one of the things that causes uh, you know, more more death than almost anything else. Uh, if I remember correctly, I saw somewhere rec fairly recently that suggested that there is more deaths to suicide than war now. Uh, that it, it is a major killer. It's a major waster of life. Uh, and anything that can help hook someone so that they're no longer that depressed, or, or at least are able to get through a, a, a phase of depression. Uh, at least to just be able to make it another day. That was what Rant Radio was. It was a place to go listen to if you were really down. If you had nothing else you could do. It was something to try. And it really was something new for its time. A particular mix of what was on it, the particular voices. There's something that could work, maybe. And I think in some cases it did. Some people were able to listen, to, to kind of clean up their own lives, or to just get through a difficult point in their life because Rent Radio was there. When Rant Radio shut down, there was a, th a couple threads on Facebook and elsewhere on Reddit where people shared some of their stories of how they were helped, of how just having something to listen to, someone who would talk to them even over the radio in an impersonal way, was enough that they were able to get through the difficult point in their life. It was in it, it they had it in them the whole time, of course. But something about that radio station brought it out of them. Hopefully something here could do that too. Anyway, this recording is getting long enough. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense about what Rant Radio was and why we might want to pick up that flame, pick up that torch, create another station, and continue on. See you next time.